Let's discuss our last basic sorting algorithm, which is called insertion sort. The idea behind insertion sort is that we keep track of two different regions. The first one is sorted and the other one is unsorted. Some books suggest that the sorted region has no elements when we start the algorithm, while other books suggest that there's one element when we start this sorted region. So what we basically do is we repeatedly take out the first element from the unsorted region and we place that correctly in its correct order in the sorted region. We repeatedly do this process till all elements in the unsorted region move to the sorted region. This algorithm is commonly used by card players when they are dealing with a set of cards in their hand. So what they basically do is they keep a track of all the cards which are sorted in their hand. Next, when they pick a new card from the deck, they basically try to insert that in the correct order. So basically the intuition from, for insertion sort is right from that approach. Let's take a quick worked example of insertion sort. So in this case, our initial array looks like this. At the end of first pass, we have one sorted region and another unsorted region. So the sorted region will have just one number, which is the first number in our array. And all the other numbers are going to be in the unsorted region. In some algorithms or in some versions of the insertion sort, you might be shown that this is our initial array. And then in the first pass, uh, whatever we are going to see in the second pass, they might show that in the first pass, we don't care. What we care about is the sequence so of sorting, which will remain the same. So in this case, after the first pass, we have one value in the sorted region, which is the first value in the array. Next, what we are going to do in the second pass is we are going to find like use the first value in the unsorted region and move that to its correct place in the sorted region. And we do this by shifting this number 29 to here and repeatedly moving, like repeatedly shifting these values on the right side. So that like wherever we want to insert the number 10, once we have stopped like shifting the adjacent numbers, we know we have found the correct position. And then we are going to swap this number 10 with this value 29. So how, it uh, like how it's working is that at the end of the first pass, we'll have 10, 29, 14, 37, and 13. With our sorted region looking like 10 and 29, and our unsorted region that consists of 14, 37, and 13. So this is the value after the first pass. Next, how we are going to move is we are going to compare 14 with 29. Since 14 is less than 29, which is we, we have the first number from the unsorted region, we are going to insert that in the sorted region. Since 14 is less than 29, we are going to move this 29 right here. So we keep track of this number 14 in some other temporary variable, which we might call key. And we are going to, at some stage, when we are actually writing the code, our algorithm will look something like this. Next, we are going to move this pointer that we have right here to here. So we are going to check whether 14 is less than 10 or not. Since it's not, that means we have found the correct position. So we are going to change the value at the current index plus one with the value 14. So our array will look like 10, 14, 29, and then our unsorted region will have 37 and 13. So this is how it will look like. Next, we are going to insert 37 at its correct position. So we have compared 37 with 29. Since 37 is greater than 29, we won't be comparing 37 with these other numbers because we have found its correct place and we know the sorted region is already sorted. So 37 will be a part of the sorted region in the next pass. Finally, we just have one number that's remaining in our array. 
and now we are going to insert this one at its correct position so at the end of the fifth pass the numbers would look something like this which is 10 13 14 29 and 37 now how this will work in execution in your actual c++ program is that 13 will be compared with 37 so since 13 is smaller than 37 13 will be kept in some other variable like key next what we are going to do is we are going to override these values with 37 and 37. next 13 our key will be compared with 29 since 29 is again greater it will be moved to the next location which is it will override this 37 with 29 next we do the same process with 14 now 14 is again larger so we are going to delete this 29 and we are going to replace that with 14 so we have two 14s right now next we are going to compare it with 10 now in this case 10 is smaller so that means wherever our pointer is like let's say it's called i so we are going to insert this key at i plus one so in this case 13 will be inserted here so our array at the end of the fifth pass will look something like this so let's say if our algorithm started with like if this state of our algorithm was called zeroth pass like some books prefer to follow that approach in that case there'll be like n minus one passes otherwise there'll be n passes you can use any of the approaches we don't care and uh, uh, but what we care about is the ordering like let's say if we give you an array that looks like this and ask you what the array would look like after one in one pass of insertion sort you should be able to answer this value and so on so this is the pseudocode of our algorithm one more thing that i want to discuss here is like what will happen if let's say if the array is sorted so if i have five values if the array is sorted what's going to happen is we have initially one that's in the sorted region and two, three, four, five in the unsorted region. So two will be compared with one. There will be no swaps happening. And then we just move the sorted region to here. Then three will be compared to two. No swaps will happen. And then four will be compared to the previous elements. Like again, same, no swaps will happen. So in this case, it's working automatically as in the optimized version of bubble sort, which is we are not having any swaps in case the array is already sorted. So let's go back to the pseudocode for this. We have our first outer loop that is keeping track of the sorted and unsorted region. The inner loop here compares the adjacent elements till we reach the position, which is uh, 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 till we reach the correct position where the element has to be swapped or has to be inserted. So all the shifting will take place in its inner loop. I would uh, ask you all to look into the pseudocode and try to dry run this on a sheet of paper if this works or not. We are also going to discuss the time complexity now for insertion sort. The, the, the number of comparisons for insertion sort will look something like O n square and the number of exchanges will be O n square as well. So the number of comparisons again will look like n square. And the reason why it will look like n square is because let's go back to our visuals. So in this case, in the first pass, there'll be one comparison. In the second pass, there'll be like two comparisons because 14 is compared with 29. And maybe 14 will also be compared to 10. Let's say if it was a worst case or something like that. So the total number of comparisons will look something like one plus two plus three plus up to n minus one. So in this case, the sum of the series is again like proportional to n into n plus one or n minus one divided by two, which again simplifies to n square. The number of exchanges will also be O n square because in the worst case, you might be shifting all the elements again and again in each pass. The insertion sort code is again shown in this link. 
So if you want, you can go over the code. I'll just go over the function. The driver code as well as the printing is uh, shown at this link. So what happens is we take in an array, we take in the size of the array. The outer loop is basically dealing with the sorted and unsorted region. So initially our sorted region will be of size zero. So in this size one, because it will have one element which starts at index zero and the unsorted region consists of one to size minus one in this case. Next, what we are going to do is we are going to add this first value in the unsorted region, which is the key is called the unsorted regions first value, which is in this case, like let's say if our sorted region had one, uh, 10 and this had five, so key will point to five. And now J is equal to I minus one. So J will start at this position. Next, we are going to check where is this five values correct position in the sorted region, which is being done by this loop. So in that case, we are going to again move the values from here to here by repeatedly inserting the values or copying values at this position with again the next position as we showed to you in the visualization. So have a piece of paper and on a piece of paper try this code. That's how it's working. And at the end of like the correct location, once we have found the correct location in this sorted region, we are going to swap and insert the key, which is we are going to insert five after like we are first we are going to move this 10 to this position and then we are going to insert five at the correct location or the location that we have found in this inner for or while loop. So in case of a sorted array, like let's say if we had a sorted array for us, which was, which looks something like this, which is one, two, three, four. So in that case, this while loop will never get executed and only the outer for loop will be executed because what happens is initially the key is this. So initially the key will point to two. Now key is less than array of J. So is two less than, which is false. So that means this loop will never enter. Next, what we are going to do is we are going to change the value of the key in the next iteration, which will now point to the first location of array of two. So because now the sorted region and unsorted region will look something like this, which is one and two are already sorted and three and four are not. So again, we are going to swap the values. So this process is repeated and this loop will never enter. So that's why in the best case, the complexity would look something like O of N. Otherwise, it's pretty straightforward since there are two loops, one inside of another. The overall complexity in the worst case will be O of N square. In the average case, also it will be O of N square. For the best case, it will be O of N because again, we never enter this loop or there are no movements that are occurring. And finally, the space will be O of one because we are doing the sorting in place, which is we haven't initialized a new array to sort these numbers. So I think that's pretty much it for uh, like the three basic sorts. There are some links for some useful visualization techniques. Uh, so this is by Professor David Gals. He has created a visualization website. You can visualize different sorts there. This again, like this top -to link is also of uh, visualizing various sorting algorithms which take in some, some sorted order of data, which is whether the data is random, whether it's ascending or descending. Uh, I'm going to show you that like at the end of when we have covered all the non-quadratic sorts as well, uh, which is the next set of videos will deal with the non-quadratic sorts, which are merge, quick and shell sort. And at the end, we are also going to talk about some other sorts, which uh, we won't go into depth, but I'm just going to give you an overview of them. That's pretty much it. Thanks for joining.